Hello and welcome to the Kimanas Park Highlight Show. In this week's edition, we'll recap the race card from Saturday, December 2nd. A card scripted to deliver a race day like no other, with three big races on offer. But topping them off was the second staging of the Cash Rich Mute Mile, which brought out patrons from all walks of life, donned in expensive royal wear while taking part in the exquisite and delightful cuisine on offer. Let's begin our highlights with race one. This was the ROK Trophy, a restricted allowance event for four-year-olds and up, going a distance of seven furlongs. Prissy from the eighth draw was the six to five favorite in the betting. They're ready, they're off. A great start as they charge away down the back stretch. Princess Sylvia, runway icon, they match strides early. Great win, just on the outside of AKA Storm. Prissy in the blue races in behind them, four and a half lengths off that lead. Rump Puncher racing out wide of horses. Traditional lady and anchor man on the move. Jack of Spades racing out wide of those, and General Chief is at the back as they've left the five and run away now to the final half of a mile in the first event. Runway Icon on the outside, battling with Princess Sylvia. Runway Icon, a narrow leader, they leave the half mile. Princess Sylvia traveling well down against the rail. AKA Storm needs to find two lengths to get to them. Prissy now on the go. Great Wayne races back some five lengths off that lead as they leave the three. Traditional Lady overtakes Anchorman under the pump. General Chief has made a place or two. Rum Puncher toward the back. And these two now being overtaken by Jack of Spades on the move late as they're coming into the top of the lane. A quarter of a mile to run in the Rock Trophy. And it is Princess Sylvia charting the course and asked to open up. A.K.A. Storm now beginning a challenge on the outside. Prissy in the blue racing out wide. Traditional Lady racing near the rail along with Great Wayne. Princess Sylvia on under pressure from AKA Storm. Here is Traditional Lady now with a scorching kick down against the rail. Princess Sylvia being caught by Traditional Lady. Traditional Lady and Chavanil Patterson point and they will take the Rock Trophy and the first event. Princess Sylvia is second close between AKA Storm out wide. Prissy on the rail. A great win has finished back in fifth. Traditional Lady with jockey Javanil Patterson aboard takes the day's first over Princess Sylvia in second, AKA Storm third and the favorite Prissy in fourth spot. The second event of the card was a Sandals Trophy, another restricted allowance event. Invited international jockey Daisuke Fukumoto gets his first mount at Kimanas Park aboard Alfred Brown's Graceful Maid. Racing. Stepping a bit slow at the back of the field, that's Lion of Ekati and Fly Messenger Fly. Whiskey blasting to an early lead, the speedy, gracefully made takes them toward the uh, six furlong points. Gracefully made, right on the rail that she's my friend. She's my friend assumes the lead from Gracefully made. Right there too, that is unruly dude. Justin Biden sandwich in between horses. Whiskey tacking on to the tail of those. Then comes the pair of uh, rail boss and uh, select me and racing at the back of the field. Fly messenger fly and a pretty girl. They pass the five head toward the four and making the running. It is uh, She's my friend, about three lengths in front and traveling nicely to passing the four. Justin Biden tracking right there into second. Coming on on the outside, that whiskey right beside whiskey and being held up. That is gracefully made. They're coming to the three for a long point and it is. She's my friend still in front, about three lengths in front of whiskey coming on. Justin Biden is still there into second. Rail boss is also coming on. Unruly dude too, they're at the top of the lane and it is, she's my friend. Tackled on the outside by Justin Biden. Whiskey is right there too and coming on, also coming on on the outside. That's real boss, they're lined up coming to the furlong pole. And it is Justin Biden, just the leader from on the outside, real boss, Justin Biden, real boss. It's a nice looking finish, real boss on the outside, Justin Biden hanging from real boss and real boss. Now gets the upper hand with the sneaky fox, it's real boss in front and real boss goes on to win. From Justin Biden, then comes, she's my friend, Whiskey. Cut tight for fifth, could be either Unruly Dude or Pretty Girl. Jockey Radish Roman, aboard the 4-5 to five favorite, gives trainer Spencer Chung his first win on the day, beating second place finisher Justin Biden by two and a half lengths in one minute 34 and a two-fifths of a second. Race 3 was the Woodford Reserve Way Trophy, a maiden special weight event for native bred and imported two-year-olds. A moderate field of seven was set to face a starter. Starter holds them, now they're off for the Woodford Reserve Way. Nordic came off a beat slow and races at the back. 
train of thought got a flyer under Le Peru and grabs that lead. Interesting times ahead now moving up to take on the challenge. Toward the outside, Princess Somali, Grecian Light is right there. These four covered by about three lengths. In behind those, a don't tell a Lulu. Hilly's dream races toward the back of the field and not recovering, that's Nordic after the slow start. They're well in the bend for home, they're about to arrive at the three and down against the rail, it's a train of thought, just the leader. Interesting times ahead, now applying some pressure. Princess Amelia goes down on the outside as they come thundering into the top of the lane. Train of thought is the one right against the rail and kicking out wide. That's Princess Amale as they drive inside the final 316th. And now Princess Amale picks up that lead. Grecian Light now coming through to worry the leader as they arrive at the furlong pole. And now Grecian Light begins to shine over against the rail. And it is a Grecian Light and terrific Tevin Foster beginning to come away from Princess Amale. It's all over. A Grecian Light will take the third. The Woodford Reserve way by maybe five lengths. Princess Somali is second. Interesting times ahead is third. Train of Thought finishes in fourth. Promising display by the Paul Swaby conditioned Grecian Light. Philip Parchment in the saddle, skillfully guiding the Philip past the opponents at the furlong pole. Race four, the Flow Trophy. A three years old and up claiming event going a distance of seven and a half furlongs. A 14-horse field declared to start. Big Jewel with six-time champion jockey Omar Walker in the saddle was a favorite going into the start. start of all They're off and racing. Not a bad line. Daddy Jones left at the back of the field along with Classical Orb as a Secret Traveler is the one that blasts into an early lead. So Secret Traveler... Just the leader from right on the outside, Baton Rouge, right there too in the middle. That's early, and that is Helicopter as Baton Rouge takes on. It's Baton Rouge in front of Helicopter. Then comes Secret Traveler right against the rail. That's Rasimanel. Out wide, that is E&I Lynx. Right behind E&I Lynx, that is a big jewel. Then comes Modern Miracle. Right on the inside of Modern Miracle, that's Inspired Miracle. Then comes Catalina right against the rail, turn on the light as they pass the four. Then comes a burn notice in that mix. Also recovering, that is a classical orb and left way out of it at the back of the field. That is Sir John. They're coming to the three and it is making the runnings. Helicopter flying away from them about four or five lengths in front and traveling nicely. Secret Traveler racing in second. Rassi Manuel racing in fourth, third. Also trying to come on, that is a big jewel, but helicopter is in front at the furlong and a half pole and looks to be in charge. Helicopter running away from this field, big jewel and company chasing its helicopter in front, coming to the furlong pole. And this one looks all over. Big jewel and uh, racing into second, that is a secret traveler, but helicopter has blown the coop. Helicopter sprinting off clear. Also running on late and coming on, that's burn notice. Helicopter beats burn notice. Secret Traveler. Then comes Modern Miracle and uh, Big Jewel in fifth. Paul Francis romps home the speedy helicopter for the day's fourth event, beating second place finisher burn notice by a six length win margin and stopping the clock at one minute 34 and two fifths of a second. Race 5 was one of the main races on the card of the Bruce on the Loose Trophy, a grade stakes open allowance event for three-year-olds and up. The imported Desert of Malibu was on a three-race winning streak and looking to make it four. They're off. They're done. The band just misses it with I've Got Magic. Outbidder racing toward the back, but the favorite as they leave the six, Desert of Malibu in the blue, goes charging through to get that lead. Madeline Sunshine is chasing, and these two now hook up to battle down the back stretch. And Madeline Sunshine now goes on narrowly as they leave the five. Desert of Malibu shadowing the leader all the time. Luxol is some four lengths back. I've got magic cars to pick up. Laban is reserved. Freedom Street races next toward the outside as they quicken now, leaving the half mile marker. A break back to Rajon the pilot and outbidder outsped and showing nothing at the moment. They're about to arrive at the final three eights. Desert of Malibu continues to lead up by some two lengths. Madeline Sunshine hot on the chase. Luxor racing out toward the outside of I've Got Magic. Freedom Street asked to pick up with Laban. Forget the rest as they've turned for home and a Desert of Malibu is in charge and stepping off toward mid-track. It's a Desert of Malibu out in front. I've Got Magic now shaken up down against the rail. Desert of Malibu and I've Got Magic in a close contest. They drive past the furlong pole. It is Desert of Malibu now shaking loose from I've Got Magic who can't cope with the speed of Desert of Malibu. The favorite, Desert of 
Malibu and devastating Dane Dawkins comes away to take it over. I've got magic. It's tight. Freedom Street and ahead, Bob. Just over Madeline Sunshine, then Outbidder running on from the back. I've got magic upsets the apple carts with a big 57 to 1 win over the favorites. Jockey Shamari Murr giving trainer Philip Fiani his first win on the card. It's now time for a break on the Kermanas Highlight Show. On the other side, we'll recap the remaining races on the card, including the highly anticipated Mute Mile. Welcome back to the Caymanas Park Highlight Show. In the second half of our presentation, we'll recap select races from the remainder of the card. Race 6 was a Maybury Gold Trophy event, a restricted allowance event for 4 year olds and up, covering a distance of 6.5 furlongs, a packed field of 15 declared to start. Ahmad Ali from the 3 box was the most favored in the betting. They're off and racing, Premier Identity steps a bit slow along with Ahmad Ali. As a wall of horses going for that lead, a shorty also stepping slow. Give me the light, blast into an early lead on the inside, that is Salad going down. So Salad, give me the light and a king air. Out wide, that's Tap It Good. Right behind them as they pass the five, that is Premier Identity and Blue Sky together. Right behind those, that is a Diamond Rock. Right against the rail, that's a Don Vincenzo as they come toward the a four for a long point on the course and heads toward the three. And it is making the running on the outside that's tap it good tap it good and salad these two are fighting for it passing the three tap it good narrowly in front of salad three lengths away before we come to king air and give me the light another four before we come to premier identity recovering as they come at the top of the lane and it is salad determining on that lead on the outside that is tap it good it's tap it good in front here comes against the rail that's give me the light tap it good in front of give me the light coming down the middle coming on the inside and now give me the light it's the front to the furlong pole it's a wall of horses coming forward also coming for that hammered alley out white premier identity Ahmed alley premier identity and premier identity has struck the front from Ahmed alley trying to fight back premier identity Identity holds on from Ahmed Ali. Got tight for third between Don Vincenzo. Give me the light and a sneaky Joe. A bang up finish. Tevin Foster with a second win of the day aboard Howard Jagai's four year old chestnut Philly Premier Identity. Second place was the favorite Ahmed Ali. Third was Don Vincenzo and a sneaky Joe in fourth. Race 7 was another one of the big events on the card, the second running of the Chairman's Plate, a Grade 3 race, overnight allowance for 3 year olds and up. Lead of 11, they're off for the Chairman's Plate. An almost perfect start. Neo Star shows early dash, goes for that lead, miniature man hounding early. Sister and Treasure racing out three wide in the purple as they go rushing into that clubhouse turn and leave the mile marker behind them. Neo Star attempts to go all the way further and beyond, check just a bit, overtaken by a miniature man. There goes Atlantic Convoy, and Atlantic Convoy now seizes the lead on the run, passing the seven. Neo Star is a length and a half back and racing in second. Miniature man and further and beyond race in front of Sister and Treasure as they go charging up to the final six. Baby Like is racing next a long way off that lead. The head cornerstone, Sunny T and Chippy race almost as a team. Sunset Silhouette is urged to go between them. Reigns with the Grey race is next and the Tekka Punt will do running late as they leave the five and a half and make their way now flashing toward the half mile. Atlantic Convoy out in front. Neo Star is racing in second and now cutting right into that lead. Further and beyond staring at them from a close up third. Miniature Man and Sister and Treasure race next as they quick now up now leaving the half mile marker the head cornerstone needs to find five and a half lengths to get to them as they leave the 716th reigns will now let loose and ask to go sunset silhouette is on the reverse baby like racing on the outside of an improving sunny tea and chippy and tech a punt at the back ask for more as they come inside the final 516th they're about to come into the top of the lane and a neo star holds the lead further and beyond in the yellow silks now will try to close the head cornerstone has made eye-catching progress it's neo star now 
under the pump and being driven to the max inside. They race toward the final furlong and it is a near star out in front. Here is the head cornerstone. Watch the great Rainsville on the outside, but still near star is strong and full of pluck inside the final 16th. It is near star driven to the max. Rainsville now gets going late. Neo star under pressure being driven to the max. It's close between Neo star Rainsville and the head cornerstone in between them. Sister and Treasure is next, then Atlantic Convoy and further and beyond in distress. Ahead Bob to the post between the top three finishers separated only by a neck and a nose for first and second place. Rainsville getting the better of second and third place finishers Neo star and the head cornerstone. The ninth race on the card was the main event entertainment group trophy. This was a restricted stakes event, a full field of 16 declared to go postward. The Frenchman Julian Aparo gets the mount of Anthony Nunez's Captain Calico. Full field of 16, they're off for the main event. Super Alex and here comes Doc missed it. As they run away now toward the final six furlongs, Captain Calico is sent through by Leperu to get that lead on the run passing the six. Box Box chases with Huntsman. Sensational move races back and forth, possibly five off that lead. Strike Smart moving up, making ground. Princess Sharon, Norblar is kept off the fractions, maybe 10 lengths off that lead as they head to the half mile. Super Alex has made some progress. Rhythm Buzz is racing up next as they get to that half mile and rush into the turn. Divine Force follows this group. All for Love is under a ride. Acknowledge me. And here comes Doc Race away toward the back. Power from above has a mountain to climb along with a wow how. And at the back it is a whiz kid. That's the order of the 16 as they come away toward the 5 16. Captain Calico out in front with that lead. Harassed all the while by Princess Sharon. And into the lane they come. Captain Calico is into it first. Princess Sharon in between horses. Sensational move, racing widest of them all. Norblar now looking for a rug against the rail. It's Captain Calico giving way. Sensational move now strikes the front. Norblar looking for groom against the fence. Princess Sharon in behind them, but it is sensational move with the lead. Captain Calico is fighting right back under a ride. It's Captain Calico regaining the advantage. Captain Calico and a Leperu will take it. It's close. Norblar possibly second over Rhythm Buzz. Close between them. Then sensational move and divine force. The favorite, Captain Calico, responds well to the foreigner's riding style and gives him his maiden win at Kimanos Park. Rhythm Buzz had to settle for second place and a Norblar third. The big one, the eagerly anticipated Mute Mile carrying a purse of US $150,000 with the foreign invader Rough Entry, also local talents Mojito, Atomica, Mahogany and the Silent Danger ability. second running of the Mute Mile. As expected, rough entry goes for that lead. The three-year-old ability in the green with the red cap races out wide. Charging through, that's a Mamma Mia in the white cap and a Mamma Mia now shows good speed and has that lead on the run down the back stretch, racing toward the six. Mamma Mia out in front. She's my destiny racing right there on the rail. As they wake their way now, run away Algo and Mahogany right up with those. Rough entry hidden from view, racing out wide of horses. Mojito the Grey races up next. Ability on the outside. I am Fred as they leave the five. In behind those, that's American Tap. Atomica has a lot of work to do, along with Is That a Fact? They are joint at the hip. Money Miser races up next as they go charging now inside the last half of a mile. Perfect Brew left toward the back of the field and the Great Duke will be running late as usual as they charge toward the final three in the Mute Mile. It's the Philly Mamma Mia. She's brave on that lead. Rough entry now sent in chase by Leperu as they're about to arrive at the 516th. Watchability closing in in the green silks. Mahogany is also bubbling to the boil, but they're into the lane and still they have not been able to head Mamma Mia here. Now is rough entry and rough entry grabs the lead. Mamma Mia falters down against the rail. Ability is wound up for run, but it is rough entry and Julian Leperu. This is the Mute Mile and rough entry and Julian Le Peru begin to streak away from them. Inside the final 16th, it seems to be all over. Rough entry, the foreign invader, and Julian Le Peru take the second running of the Mute Mile. Ability is second. Mamma Mia, is that a fact? Is fourth, and Perfect Brew is fifth. An anticlimactic end to an event that took an entire year to run was running a new stakes record of 1 minute and 38 seconds flat.
by the Rohan Crichton trade, a rough entry. Also, a second win for the French jockey, Julien Laparo. Lance Whitaker spoke to the winning trainer, Rohan Crichton, and also the winning jockey after the race. Leparo aboard. Um, two wins now in Jamaica, two wins this afternoon. Um, the horse was heavily backed as a 75 bet, Julian. You rode that race confidently. Yeah, you know that horse, he, he was traveling the whole time very nicely. Uh, we had a good post outside, so I could kind of just break good, but kind of save a little bit uh, at the beginning. And, uh, you know, like when I asked him, I had a little pressure on the outside, so I asked him to get going. And around the turn, I was doing it so easy that uh, he, when he kicked at the end very nicely. So uh, I, heard, I heard there was a new stakes record, so he obviously he won a pretty impressive. 23 by 45, the six furlongs in 110. So the pace quickened a bit as you headed towards uh, the, the home stretch. Yeah, no, we were going good pace, but he's a fast horse. And, uh, you know, he's been running six furlong over there in, uh, at Goldstream. So he's a fast horse. He put me in a race very comfortable. Yeah, how was your experience here in Jamaica? Very good, you know. Like not, I mean, winning two, two races over here and uh, winning the big one, it's, uh, it's, it's great. It feels good. Yeah, rough entry. You had never ridden this horse before, had you? So you didn't know what the horse felt like. But of course, you'd have read the form and so on. Were you confident going in? Yeah, I mean, I watched uh, all the replays from Gulfstream Park. Uh, never rode him, but rode for the trainer, Ryan, over there at Gulfstream. So now very confident with the horse. Uh, I think my only question was the distance. See if he could get the distance, but he obviously did great today. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Julian, and congratulations on your big win. Thank you. Thank you. Julian Lepereau, he's from France. He's based in the USA. He was a 2009 Eclipse Award winner as the most outstanding jockey in the USA. He was also an Eclipse Award winner or champion jockey in uh, USA in 2006, both a champion rider and a champion apprentice as well, based on the number of wins he had. But he rode confidently there aboard Rowan Crichton's uh, rough entry. And Rowan, congratulations on this victory. Um, congratulations on how well you've been doing at Gulfstream Park. But this victory here in Jamaica must be really pleasing for you as your home country. Elated, elated. What a great ride. I wanted the guys at the barn did a fantastic job. Coming out of quarantine, it was tough, but uh, the horse handled it well. And I tell you, I was very confident. Very confident. Can you talk to us about the exercise gallops? Because there were some onlookers in the mornings who were a little bit tricked by what the horse did on the exercise track in the sense that uh, the horse did a lot of running actually after it passed the winning post, we are told. So some of the splits that were recorded weren't, weren't genuine splits. Can you talk to us about that? No. <laughs> well, you know, you don't get paid in the morning. You get paid in the afternoon. So we were trying to, you know, not use him up, bring him to the race day as happy and as fit as possible. Yeah, when you read the race, the local horses, Mahogany and Atomica, who were both the favorites last year and lost, we said before the race that these two horses, when they run bad races, it's because they aren't able to relax in the races. And that's exactly what happened to them again today. I'm pretty certain you had studied them as your rivals. Well, yes, and Julian and I spoke about it. And Julian noticed that um, Rough Entry was able to relax in his races. And that was exactly what he wanted to do. And he did a great job. Yeah. Talk to us about your career. You have won over 300 races at Gulfstream Park. You were number two trainer in the spring summer meet in Gulfstream in 2022 behind Safi Joseph Jr. So a lot of success in Florida. Um, we hear that you may be having some thoughts of setting up a stable here in Jamaica. Well, we have. We have, we have about six, six horses here. So and, and, and you have six now, but is there a plan to build it? Well, slow, step by step. Yeah. Hey, Ron, congratulations on the big win here by Rough Entry. Uh, splendid performance by the horse. And uh, will he be staying here? Absolutely. That's a, that, that's a good story. All right. Thank you very much, Ron Crichton. As we recap another thrilling weekend of racing where we saw the best thoroughbreds on show, the exquisite display of fashion, expensive cars, food, drinks, as part of what was a royal affair of racing and lifestyle. This has been another edition of the Kimanos Park Highlight Show. See you next time.